Welcome back. It's been a little bit since I've updated you on the Fiero. Uh, I got really busy with work. With that, the budget for the Fiero increased. Uh, however, my time decreased. And then I went and bought another project car, as one does, and have been a little distracted with that. So let's um, recap on where we're at. We pulled the Fiero motor. We have a J-Series J30 A4 and six-speed transmission out of a 2004 Honda Accord. That's all pulled out, and we are ready to start looking at combining the two. Originally, I was going to try and modify the existing subframe. As I said, the budget changed. Uh, we've picked up some tools. We've picked up a bunch of parts. I've been stockpiling them, obviously. Um, just as I think to order them and as the autocross season comes to a close, my time will, uh, slowly come back to the Fiero and hopefully we can get it done through this winter. All right. So we're going to take all the footage I could find and throw it together. Uh, a lot of it was taken on my cell phone, so we might have some vertical shots in here. Right now I'm taking off the water pump, cleaning it out, uh, took off the timing belt, and just gonna replace it with some brand new components. Okay, we're ready to make this happen again. We have our timing mark lined up. Our timing mark lined up, our timing mark lined up, and grenade pin in the correct spot. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, tensioners set. Again, timing mark. new water pump and timing belt. Now we're going to cut out this trunk. The Fiero is entirely space frame, which means the structural components are metal and then it just has aesthetic uh, body on top. So uh, this trunk is non-structural and I can just cut it right out and make room for exhaust and a diffuser in the future. So, at this point we have the engine out, we cut out this trunk, which is great because that's going to give us more room, but now we need to look at the fuel system. Uh, I have a new uh, AM pump to go inside of it, and then a fuel pressure regulator, since the Honda motor doesn't come with the fuel pressure regulator. The fuel tank for this car is right in the center, and... You can see the fuel tank here, it runs the length of the vehicle. So we're gonna undo those fuel tank braces and straps, drop it out the bottom. So we're gonna put an Aeromotive 340 liter per hour fuel pump in tank. One of the problems with the Fiero is that it has fuel starvation under cornering and hard acceleration. One way to solve this is to have a surge tank, uh, which eventually we'll get to as we run higher horsepower. After this, we're gonna dump right into the suspension refresh. We're keeping the front knuckles. So I'm gonna push out the hub and the hub bearing. And here we have the bare knuckle. I'll paint it up and we'll start reinstalling the new components. We have new bearings going in right now. With the new axle flange, uh, I expect to run a spacer on this. So I have extended ARP hardware that we put in right now and it makes it very simple. 
And then at the end, we have a really nice looking knuckle that we can dump into our suspension. All right, so as I mentioned from the beginning, my initial plan was to take the front suspension off of the Honda Accord and just weld it into the back of the Fiero as best I could. Subframe everything, motor mounts, make it fit. Here is uh, the front lower control arm, knuckle, upper control arm. Where a lot of my time went was trying to figure out how to make this work within the Fiero. So stock, it would work. Um, we've drafted it up here, and you can see um, spindle looks great. In fact, I 3D printed the model. Um, so this, the spindle looks great. Uh, and this lower control arm, um, stock from Honda, would technically work. Uh, here we can see the lower frame, upper frame rail, firewall of the Pontiac Fiero. So you can kind of see how it would fit in there. Uh, let's also get the top. Um, this CAD drawing was by a Fiero member uh, named Blues, and like it has been super, super useful for me. I just got it to scale. Uh, obviously, he has measurements on it. Um, and I'm using it to mock up points. I've referenced it to my chassis and I'm very confident in it. So this is the stock Fiero uh, subframe in the rear. And you can see how the Honda lower control arm could fit close to the stock uh, location of the subframe. My issue is I was having a hard time getting the correct amount of um, uh, anti-roll uh, uh, let's see here my issue was I was having a hard time getting the instant center uh, exactly where I wanted it so here uh, is my drawing of the instant center uh, let me get some more context here here's the rear of the Fiero and then if we go into the suspension mounting points you can see uh, I'm putting this instantaneous center out here, and then, um, or the, uh, not instantaneous center, the, um, oh, I forget the name, this thing, yeah, instantaneous center, and then the roll center, there we go, uh, I'm trying to get the roll center as close to the bottom of the subframe as possible, uh, this is all based off of ride height, of a 275 whoa, um, 275 rear tire so we went with 275 40 17s which would look like this it's a lot of sidewall um, but I think that's gonna fit the best uh, anyways I was having a hard time with this uh, getting it just how I wanted it and the second problem I was having is the bushings for this would be rubber. This is where the um, spring and strut mount. That's rubber. Uh, I couldn't find a pillow ball or a ball bearing bushing. The hard race bushings up here um, are back ordered and expected in December. I don't want to wait that long. And then the bushing set for like the left and right side would be 500 bucks. And I think we can make them cheaper. So. Uh, instead of that, we are going with custom tubular lower control arm. Um, and then I'm going to remove some of this reference. Now we'll take out the rear, take out the top. 
and then you can see what I'm thinking for a uh, subframe on how to mount this, right? We're hitting this stock pickup point up front. Uh, we have two tabs that come off and we'll just get a through bolt and solid mount this. Uh, originally it had some polyurethane and then um, everyone upgrades to, to solid or as solid as possible. And then again, uh, we have a stock mounting location here. Uh, I'm not in love with this. I think I'm gonna have uh, another tube come out and um, have a sphere around here and, and mount that a little more rigidly. Anyways, uh, so we got these two pickup tabs. Uh, before I go full send and start building this, I need to figure out where the engine is in relation to this. Um, I did some super duper quick measurements and was seen that uh, I might have a little bit of conflict on engine location. And this was just based off of axle center line. Um, however, when I put the engine in the Fiero, so here are pictures of the Fiero um, just with the engine rolled underneath in the engine bay to make sure it fit. Uh, this engine bay does fall away pretty dramatically. Um, and then here we are again, it's just rolled under to make sure it would fit eyeball widthwise. Uh, this oil filter housing, I might need to spring for the oil filter housing relocation kit. Um, that's 500 bucks. But I think it will fit between the two frame rails very nicely. Again, frame rails here. So um, this mount might be in conflict. And this, if this is the true axle center line, which seems like it might be, uh, we could have some massaging issues. Obviously, we could get some angle into the um, axle to move the engine back a little bit. Either way, that's uh, why I haven't started building yet. And I haven't had the time to do it. But with the pickup points here, um, and then the top pickup points would be along this axis. Uh, I just haven't drawn it out. Uh, we're going to, again, make our own upper control arm, uh, but we're gonna use skunk to uh, upper ball joints uh, because they bolt in and we can make like uh, three eighths inch uh, steel plate bolt in those upper ball joints, um, reinforce them, and then maybe just clevises to rod end, to um, rods to rod ends uh, for the upper. And then uh, springs, we're looking at doing onboard suspension. Um, so instead of having the strut that mounts here and would come up somewhere in the shock tower region, we would go and uh, um, put a cantilever in here and I like it'd be really cool to build heave suspension into this because uh, I do plan on building arrow in the future um, however I don't know if that's going to be really feasible with this angle and the amount of travel I still want to retain so deal with that later um, I like to create problems with complexity anyway so here we're looking at roll center um, this is what the stock Fiero rear is. And so you can see the problem. This roll center moves everywhere with any amount of lean. And then it's also dramatically impacted by bump. So the green dot that's flying around the screen, uh, that is the point at which the car's body tries to roll around. Uh, this is with the McPherson strut style suspension and it's, um, it's aggressive. So we are, already lowered so I'm lowered a bit so already my roll center is below the ground and then when you start rolling like it just moves everywhere uh, moving to this new Accord suspension geometry not only is my roll center oop, not only is my roll center gonna stay uh, pretty flat with the bottom of the subframe on bumps uh, but then when we do roll uh, you can see how much less movement that is and that's going to feel substantially better i wasn't able to get negative camber gain under compression or yeah under compression and that's uh because we're using the constraint of those knuckles 
Um, I could do some crazy stuff, but then like it just wouldn't quite work. There are the um, roll center correction ball joints available for the cord. And I was looking at that, that would drop this down another inch or two. Uh, and while it would help, it doesn't help enough. Like I could always go and move this on board point. Like these two points are fixed. These two points are wherever I say they should be since I'm making upper and lower control arms. Uh, this was the most reasonable that I feel will still fit the package. So uh, way too much time has gone into playing with 3D modeling. Uh, that's not my day job. Um, I did go to school for mechanical engineering for a few years, but uh, certainly not a mechanical engineer. Uh, just enough to be dangerous or ignorant. Who knows? So, uh, yeah, that's where the Fieros left off. Thanks again for following along with this build. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a little bit of challenge. Um, I think the next steps are going to be removing the rear body so that we can have access to those frame rails, uh, start cleaning them up. Uh, I bought a Rogue Fab tubing bender and we're going to start uh, bending up that lower subframe and mounting the engine to it. Once that engine is mounted, I can then mock where the uh, suspension pickup points will be to make sure that there's no conflict of mounting. Um, and at that point, uh, I will like send cut, send them and have them precision cut to, uh, to just weld in. As for the E46, I will make a few videos about that. Um, real quick, I got a good deal on it. It's stock with worn out everything. I've gone through and replaced um, some bushings, coilovers, sway bars, sticky tires, and just track the thing. Thanks again.